Hello, this is Broy, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series for uh, a, a game called Arms Race The Cold War Era. Uh, I was actually approached by the developers of this game uh, and given like uh, an opportunity to have a CD key, you know, to try this game out on either a live stream or, or a recording, uh, YouTube recording or whatever. And I uh, decided, you know, go ahead and give it a try. Um, I've actually been playing it quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, just trying to get to understand the game and know it. Plus, I knew that they were about to have a new DLC drop. You know, this it, um, when they first gave it to me, it was about a week away from the DLC. So I figured I'd try the game out, wait for the DLC. And then once the DLC came out, I would go ahead and try and do a recording and see uh, see what uh, what can happen. Um, like I said, I was given a key, so full disclosure there. But I, I'm no, no way being sponsored for this or anything like that. That's, that's the extent of... Uh, of anything that was given to me for for uh, playing this game um, it's a, it's an interesting game it's definitely I mean as you can obviously tell it's a, a Cold War era game um, it's kind of a grand strategy type game I mean you're definitely gonna be seeing a map of the entire world and dealing with that um, and it's uh, I don't know like I said I, I like to give love to, to to indie developers and develop you know small groups of developers I mean I think there's only like a it's a two or three developer team or something like that that, that made this game um, initially, I think they might have added like a, an extra artist and sound person, something like that. So I think the total team size, I mean, it's definitely less than 10 people. It might have been like five or six people total or something like that. So, um, not a large team and definitely, uh, you know, you're not going to see like big budget, you know, graphics or anything like that. But I think it's, I think the graphics are very, uh, usable. I think, I think they work for the game. I think they are great for, for what we're seeing. Um, and I actually think some of the cool, some of the graphics and some of the effects and things like that are pretty cool. Um, obviously, you can hear the music, it's going, stuff like that. But anyway, we're going to get into the game. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit of a let's play. It's probably going to be a little bit of a review slash let, let's play of sorts as well. I'm going to say some of the things that I do like about the game, some things I dislike, and uh, kind of go from there. Um, here's the main game screen. Obviously, very simple game screen. Um, if I go over here to the options, you can see uh, here's all the DLC they have. They actually have... Uh, another DLC planned for uh, September of this year. So they're already planning out, you know, the next DLC, even though this one, the most recent one, United Nations, just came out. Um, so it's kind of cool to see that they're continuing to develop for this game and continuing to keep it updated. Uh, as you can see, I've only, I've got zero wins. It's weird that it says zero games started because I've definitely played several games. I have about 10, 10 hours or so of play time, but um, I have lost every game so far, unfortunately. Uh, they have technically a campaign mode, uh, but uh, you have to achieve certain targets and then win the game and since i can't even win the game i was like there's no way i can do these so um i have to figure out how to win the game first before i can try that and then you can play as either the united states or um russia here or soviet union i guess it's technically ussr during this time period and um the uh and then you can change like how you want to play your each of your leaders and i'll dig into that here in a minute but uh i'm gonna play as the united states and so the United States has four leaders. We have Truman, Kennedy, Nixon, and Reagan. And the time period of this game goes from, I think it's 1960 is when it starts, all the way up to the year 2000. And the year 2000 is, is when the game will end with whoever has the highest score or if you can take over the other person's country. So um, we have the United States here. And then, like I said, I'm going to play as them. Um, and so let's see here. So as you can see, each of these have different bonuses. And... We'll get into a little bit more about what these bonuses mean as we go. But if I have it set on historic, you can kind of get an idea of what each of these guys does based on their outfits. Like Truman, they're, they're portraying him as more of a military guy. So he gets a little bit extra firepower for his air, ground, and navy. Now, alternatively, I could play Kennedy as a military guy and get you know a similar type uh, military type boost. Um, so you could go away from the historic and, and get that extra you know something if you wanted to. Um, just like I could do Truman with some of these other things. I don't know why it's not showing Truman's secondary bonus here. Uh, when I leave it on historic, but his secondary bonus would be the military one, uh, because of the outfit he's wearing. So I don't know why it's not showing that. I think it still will apply. Um, I may just select this just to make sure it applies to, you know, because I, I do want to play the historic versions of as, as they call them historic. Um, but since that's, that may just be a graphical issue. I, I didn't see that before. Anyway, um, so we have Truman here. we got more uh, firepower from him. Kennedy has space technology cost reduction. Nixon gets more spies and diplomats production every year. That's actually pretty nice. And then Reagan gets uh, more uh, global consequence changes every 10 years. So 
Uh, global consequences, you'll see a little bit more about that as well. Uh, and then, like I said, each one of these has like a an extra additional thing here as well. Truman gets uh, military technology costs decrease plus one to military production yearly. Not too bad. If we were to play Kennedy historically, he would be economic. His uh, diplomats production costs, spies production costs, and industry production costs goes down by 20%. In addition to the space technology costs going down, that's, that's a lot of money savings, which money is a pretty big deal in this game. Um, and then both Nixon and Reagan are um, diplomatic, it looks like, as, as they're selecting them. So they get uh, one diplomat influence action increased by uh, one, two in total. So they get two diplomatic actions, which I think diplomat actions, I wonder if that applies to the... Oh, no, that's something else. That, that, that is actually base game. That's not U, UN stuff. So, um, And we'll explore a little bit more about what each of these things means um, later on. As of right now, I can only play on easy. You can't play medium or hard until you've actually beat easy. And again, I haven't beat easy. Um, I actually think I'm going to play Kennedy. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just select, select which he actually is. Because I'm not sure if this is just a bug or if it... I don't know. I just want to make sure that I do, in fact, get the diplomatic production costs. So we'll just go ahead and select economic. It's probably just a graphical issue, but we'll play it safe. And uh, there's also an Iron Man mode, which we're not going to do again because I can't select that because, again, you have to... I think you have to at least be easy before you can try Iron Man. And Iron Man mode or Iron Mode, you have to play through the entirety of the game within one sitting as opposed to being able to save and come back to it later. So that, that's kind of how I classify Iron Mode. All right, let's go ahead and launch the game. Like I said, graphics are, you know, not, they're fairly basic, but they're very functional. I mean, a little countdown time here, nothing, nothing wrong with that. All right, so here we are in game and let me make sure the game is paused. We'll put it on turn base All right, or pause, we'll put pause. There is a concept of turn base, which is kind of cool in this game. Um, Turn base just means that I can hit it in turn base, and then every time I want to hit the turn, it'll advance another month, which is, you know, kind of a cool deal. Otherwise, slow, medium, fast just ticks through those months, you know, bit by bit. So it's kind of a cool little extra addition. I mean, I'll, honestly, just playing it with uh, the pause button and um, pausing it when you want to is just kind of how the a lot of uh, a few pair of like Paradox games like uh eu4 ck2 kind of like that. that's kind of how that that works so that's kind of what i'm used to so i'll probably just play it on that mode but i do like the fact that the turn-based thing is there so here's our screen uh again we have a map of the world broken up into different like little quadrants brazil bolivia colombia stuff like that here's africa here's southeast asia stuff like that china and then you have two different colors here we got blue you know which represents the united states and we have uh red which represents the Euro ussr and that's their influence things that they currently influence like as of right now france is currently uh within our ally our control right here as you can see right here this little uh bluish symbol next to france if you look at the ussr it's got the or not the ussr let's look at poland it's got the hammer and sickle which means it's under uh ussr influence um currently france for example there's a bunch of stuff down here and we we'll have to get into it as we go but for right now we'll just say Right now, France is happy with us. There's no opposition. There's very little opposition. It's only 10, 10%, if you will. Um, let's see. Here's how many diplomats, uh, how much military, and how many spies that we have to spend. Uh, and so we'll see more of that as we get into the game. And then this right here is exactly ex actually how much influence we currently have. So right now, we only have 10 influence with France, even though they are under our alliance. So we do have to be careful, you know, I mean, I suppose if USSR wanted to try hard enough, he could start flipping his uh, influence and flip France back over to his side, you know, through through some political means and some spy, mini, you know, maneuvers and things like that. But it would take him a while. He's starting at five and it, you have to get it to at least 80 before you can try anything like that. So it would take him a little bit of time. Um, other things you can see is I'm going against Khrushchev here. So he is a military leader, it appears. And... As of right now, we're both 50-50 on the global influence, 1301 exactly for both of us. And global influence is roughly the, uh, it's kind of like the score of these places or the influence of these places. Or sorry, the influence is the influence of what you have in each of these places with some modifiers pulled into place from, from space and things like that. So we'll get into the space uh, race as well here in a minute, but the space race can also modify the, uh, the influence um, percentage as well. 
So currently we're, we're tied as far as overall global influence. Um, you can see some of the cool like you know graphic effects here and stuff like that. I think those are pretty cool. Um, other things that you can see is these little uh, kind of uh, chevrons and stars uh, that you see here and there. Those represent how many units of soldiers we have in each of these territories. If it's uh, blue, then that means these are actual American forces or allied forces, maybe if you will. If they're gray, that means they're just we're just maybe we're giving them weapons or we're giving them, you know, training or something like that. We're, we're funding them, but we're not actually putting our people there so that they're, they're just gray. And then if they're red stars, same thing for them. If they're red stars, that means that's their units. Uh, and then if they're gray, let's see if I can find any of their units that are gray. There we are. Then that means they're just funding them. Um, the guys at the bottom, uh, you might be able to figure that out pretty easily. Those are spies. You can have up to five spies in an area and spies do do, you know, occasional combat with each other which you don't really see but occasionally they can fight each other and, and that one will disappear because you know he got killed off or whatever but um you have to have at least one spy in an area to be able to see the other person's forces so right now i can't see if they have forces in italy unless i added a spy there and we'll we may we may add one there or we may not we'll see i currently have three spies in france which means i could do a little bit more powerful actions as in the sense that if i were to support a parade to make people happier well then I actually get 3% or 3 happiness more as opposed to if I only had one spy, I can only get one happiness. So again, that might be a little confusing, but we'll get into that a little bit more as we go. Um, other things that you can see on the screen, um, I can flip this little switch over here and we can see how much the military balance is currently in every, every situation. Um, as of right now, I'm guessing because it's the start of the game or maybe it's just, yeah, it's just, I guess it's just the start of the game. Um, we're at 50-50. Now, the way the military works is that you have these three categories. You have air, you have land, and you have sea. That's what each of those represents. And based on your technology, and I'll go ahead and select, select that. That's going to be fine. Based on the technology points that you've put in each, each of those, you know, as you advance through these technology kind of horizontal trees, um, you get more and more points. And so let's say if I put three points, more points into the, the air and my opponent did not, well, then I would have a lot better uh, attack power in places that have a lot of air, which, you know, there's a couple places that might have more air than others. Um, like some of these places like this, these all have a lot of ground. And so I might want to actually put more ground forces. Like here's one that's got air, air Iran. Uh, if I had more air than he did, then I might actually start getting the percentage higher, which means that my troops will have a higher chance of beating his troops. And it's not, you don't actually see the combat going on. It's just, you fill up your side of the troops he fills up his side or however many you want to put in there. And then the percentages are just kind of every tick of the game. It, it you know, they live or die based off of, you know, I guess a die roller, so, so to speak, based on the percentages that you have here. So it actually works out pretty well. I actually kind of like, that's one of the mechanics that I do think is pretty cool about the game. Is just kind of go up these technologies based on what you feel like you want to achieve. If I want to do a lot more sea-based stuff, then I might focus more on the ships and not care so much about the other ones or, or something like that. So that does give us an ability to focus our military technology on something that we, you know, the direction that we want to go with the game. And, you know, you'll see the effects of that as we progress. And so there might be a situation where we are outgunned because we didn't go like in this area in Turkey. Maybe we didn't go high on the ground. We did go high on the air. Well, then in that case, maybe he does have an advantage in, the, in this particular zone. So something to think about. Um, Nuclear, well, that's another option that you can you can click through that does increase firepower as well. And you can see the nuclear percentage here. Um, there is a win condition if uh, one side, I believe, gets to... It changes based off of the difficulty. And I, I, haven't, I don't have the manual pulled up right this second. So please forgive me if the percentage is wrong. But if you've ever wanted to see it, you could definitely pull up the manual. Uh, it's like 75 or 80%, something like that. If one side gets to that... Um, I think I have to get 75% on easy and uh, that's like an automatic win. Uh, he has to get like to 85 or something like that. Like the easy mode, the computer has to get a higher percentage of the nuclear power over the, the player, which obviously if you think about it, if somebody got like 65, 70, 75% of the nuclear power of the world. That's a pretty powerful swing of, of things. So I can see why that would be a considered a win condition. Um, these flags up here are just like just quick ways to just jump to places. There, there's nothing... I don't know if they mean anything specific. I think they're just, again, quick ways to jump to places. Um, what else that we got going on? I'm trying to think if there's anything down here that I need to speak to again. Let's flip back over to this. 
That's how much money we have, which you can also see that up here at the top. I have 2,500 in the blue. He's got 2,500 in the red. Um, and again, the opposition, we'll dig into that a little bit more as we get into some things. Uh, here's the firepower advantage. As you get an advantage in firepower, or sorry, as you get an advantage in influence, uh, you actually get, that ends up giving you an advantage in firepower. So if I had 60% influence, I have like, I think it's either 10 or 15 more firepower just across the board than he does. So getting influence is a huge factor in uh, continuing to, to, to grow more in the rest of the game. Um, other things would be that, uh, as you can see, each of these provinces does have a score factor. So each some, some provinces are worth more than others as far as overall like score at the, here at the top. Currently, we're at 22 and 22. So score is something that's important to keep in mind. Um, and then we get to the buttons up here at the top. Um, the first button is the space race. And the space race, you know, it's a little interesting. You see two different green spots right here. One goes down this way, and it's all of these ground... Um, Kind of installations and then you have the the kind of the rocket launches if you will and if i look on click on these you can see all some of the different uh things that come up and i do like the fact that they've got uh, the ussr actually has different goals i mean they're the exact same spot and i think they cost the exact same but they're different write-ups and different images and stuff like that so this is kind of a cool little way to make them unique from each other but uh, as you go up you know things get more expensive and you're kind of getting better and better things um but as you can see increases alliance influence by two percent Increases alliance influence by 2%. So these increase, increase your alliance influence. These increase your global influence. Okay, so what's the difference there? Well, alliance influence is only the ones that are in blue. Still valuable, but getting a 2% alliance influence over what, like five or six countries is what, 12% total, you know, 12, 12 more influence effectively? Not a lot. I mean, it's still something. It's still very important to have. Uh, but getting a 2% global influence across every country you know obviously it's going to give me a lot more so getting the rockets is a little bit more important um i think you have to i actually don't know i i, I usually tend to have the ground forces go um pretty quickly so i'm usually past these lines when the ground force goes so i'm not sure if you need the corresponding ground force and this one to be able to get this launch here in the middle i actually don't know how that some of that works but um and we'll dig into that a little bit more we'll see how, how it works but one of the one of the bonuses that you can have is to finish the space race before everybody else. You do get an increased bonus if you're the first person to get something. So if I'm the first person to launch the um, that was zero percent, so let's go to that one. If I'm the first person to launch this one, I think it's double. I could be wrong. Uh, it's either I get double or he gets half if he's the second, something like that. So if I get one percent, maybe he gets. I guess he wouldn't get 0.5 percent. Maybe that's a bad example. Let's use the. the this one is an example. If I get 2%, maybe he gets 1%, but I actually think it might be double. I think I get 4%, he gets 2%. It's explained again better in the manual, but I just know that you want to be the first to achieve these. The first person to achieve these gets a bigger bonus and that's a bigger deal. So it's much more important to be the first person to achieve these. Um, this right here is our overall just kind of scorecard of influence and stuff, but this is also where we can see our diplomats and spies. Um, I could sort things by like, you know, overall influence. I could see that over here in Ireland. I'm almost at that 80 influence mark where I can actually flip them over uh, diplomatically. If I have 80 influence and they have 80 opposition, then I can flip them over without ever having to send a single soldier there if I wanted to. So that's something to consider. Um, you can also sort by opposition, where Central America obviously has got high opposition, but I don't have I don't have close to the 80 influence. Once they get to 80 opposition, well then you can go to war over that, and the war will determine who takes that province. So. Sometimes when people are getting close to opposition, you've got to take you got to think about, do I want to start sending troops there so I can make sure that I am um, in position to take that once the, the war kicks off? You know, the, 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 the rebels kind of rise up, if you will. Um, let's see what else. Score does affect your GNP, your, your gross uh, net production, I guess. What is that? Gross national production. I think that's what it is. Oh my goodness, how do I not know what GMP knows? I know what it is. I just, for some reason, mind blanking. Apologies for that. But um, score does affect your GMP you know, a little bit. It's not a huge amount, but it's, it's you know, almost 1% of my current GMP is my current score. So it's, it's something. Um, diplomats and spies. I currently have eight, five diplomats and 10 spies available. Uh, you can see right here, I have some money. I'm not going to click on these things because unfortunately, that one thing I, a little frustrating in this game is that your decisions are final. I wish there was a way to like 
undo it real quick. Like, okay, I made a mistake. Let me undo this and then lock in my decision. I wish that was kind of a thing um, because sometimes I've accidentally like clicked on something like like not intentionally meaning to undo it. And then my decision is locked in. And I can't do anything about it. So that's been unfortunate in the past. But so that's, I'm not going to click on any of these. But as, the, as I increase these, it increases my overall budget. So right now for diplomacy, I'm spending $1 per month, $12 per year. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up over time. And this also means that because I'm spending $1 per month, every eight months I get a new spy. Uh, I'm spending zero on diplomats, so I'm not getting any more any diplomats right now. So if I increase this to one, then I could get one every eight months. If I increase the spies to two, I can get a spy every four months, things like that. So just, just the math works out pretty simply like that. I already looked at this. Same type of mechanic here. If I increase these, you know, to like one or two or something like that, then my target on the first one is 50. So if I increase it to one, then after... 50 months then i will get advanced up to the next one or after that one would be 100 months or 200 months so obviously doing one dollar is not going to get you very far at some point you may want to do two or three or four or five dollars you know whatever it is that you're trying to go for um military production down here is also in a similar way uh, vein um the this up here is the technology this makes your military stronger this right here is how many actual active military you know forces that you can deploy you have um, so right now we're going to get one every 10 months. So that's kind of how that works. Um, this is the um, consequences or the, not the consequences, the, um, what's, the, what's it called? I actually don't remember the name of this. I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, the year does start in 1950. I was wrong. It's not 1950 to 1960 is the first era, if you will. Um, but anyway, these are, these are kind of like just events that you can get to trigger. And the way they, what they do for you when they trigger is, you know, depends on who you are. Right now, if the USSR, USSR uh, triggers this unthinkable thing, they get 30 USSR influence in all Democratic Alliance countries. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, whereas if we trigger this, we get three Alliance military and 85 opposition in all Soviet Alliance Europe. So that means we get three military in all of these guys right here and it immediately get it over the opposition threshold that allows us to start a war. So if we had a whole bunch of troops to back them up and our technology is in a good spot, it's possible that if we got this thing to trigger, we could flip some of those to ourselves, you know, by fighting a war there. And again, some of these other ones are, are going to give us different things as well. I'll go ahead and just flag on all the American ones because those are the ones that matter for us. Um, this one right here, obviously more budget for us. 150 is quite a bit, a, a pretty big budget. This one right here is the opposite. Um, Hungary leaves the Soviet uh, alliance and we lower the USSR budget by 100. That's also a pretty big deal. That's good for us. Uh, this one increases firepower for air, navy, land for USA. Pretty good deal. So we'll dig into some more of these, and there's more for each era. Um, it changes, you know, throughout the eras. Um, next we have industry. This is one of the newer DLCs uh, that came along. Uh, the the nukes is one DLC. Uh, the industry is another DLC, and then the UN is the third DLC that just came out, which I actually haven't played with the UN yet. This DLC, and I'm going to try and be careful, make sure I'm not triggering anything. But the way this works is, I can take any of my alliance countries which apparently I currently have seven alliances. Um, so if I take France right here, they get four, you know, per month. They have a score of four. I can then group them with a, you know, any country in the world that's not USSR, any neutral or alliance country. So let's say, I don't know, let's grab Turkey. Turkey's worth one. So we'll spend five, we'll spend five bucks per month. That's 60 bucks per year, which does add up. Um, and we'll do that for 19 months. And at the end of it, we can select, you know, a, a resource to get. We can either get some spies, we can get some um, some more military, or we can get some more diplomats. So it's just a way to get some more supplementary stuff back without having to invest maybe necessarily your, your other points. Um, I haven't done the math, but presumably this actually maths out to better for you because why else would you do this over the other one? Um, so it's kind of a, a new kind of interesting way to do things. And then there's the UN. And again, I haven't really not done it the UN. I know that you get prestige and they can spend the prestige on condemning aggressions and things like that. So aggression is if somebody goes to war against somebody, whoever caused the war, whoever started the war is the aggressor. And so you can condemn that aggression and things like that. You can force peace and things of that nature. So we'll see how that plays into this a little bit. Um, the only other thing I have not looked at is the budget screen. So the budget screen, oh, this is the tough one because this is, this is where I've lost my games is the budget screen. The budget has just been so difficult to deal with. Um, 
you only get three actions per year, effectively $3 that I can spend or three. It's, it is three actions, but in a way you can also think of it as $3. So I can either come over here and like increase, like I can increase this three times and that's, that's what I can do for the entire year. Or I can increase this one and increase, you know, this one and increase, you know, this one, something like that. So that's, those are things that I can do to, um, for my action for that year and that lasts the entire year. Now, obviously if I spent $3 on all that stuff, well, over the course of the year, that's $36. That means that if nothing else changed, um, I'm getting 36 less dollars next, next year than I did this year. Um, so I know that doesn't make maybe not a whole lot of sense, but once we see it, uh, like the, the ticker kind of start showing us our revenue and output and stuff like that a little bit more, it'll, it'll make a little bit more sense, but effectively you get revenue based off of a percentage of last year's, you know, I guess budget right now we're at $2,500. If our GNP growth was 10%, then next year we would get $250 increase. Well, if we did nothing with that money, well, then that would put our total at the 2750. Well, if the year after that, we got another 10%, then that would be $275 that we would get an increase, which would put us over $3,000. And you could see how, if you do nothing, it will continue to grow, 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 grow. And at some point, you know, you're going to be, you know, making a whole lot of money. So, but obviously if you do nothing, how are you going to win the game? So it's a real balance between how do you make sure that your revenue increases uh, by not spending too much, but also spending enough that you can actually do something in the game. There's also this button here where you can increase your uh, growth of your budget by 1%. Now, the way the budget increases, it's, it's a random number between 5 and 10%, and it's completely random. Some year I could get 5 and the USSR could get 10 or vice versa, or you both get 7 or 8. It's completely random. Um, so by increasing by 1%, then I, I guarantee at least I get 1% growth, which is, you know, 1% of 2,500 bucks is $25. Well, if I spent 1% growth, that's $25 I'm guaranteeing. And then I spent the other two on other actions, uh, which would be, you know, two times 12, which is 24. Effectively, I've kind of net, net, you know, stayed the same because I'm spending, tw I'm gaining 25, spending 24, effectively I gain a dollar. Um, so it's almost always good to try and increase your budget a little bit every once in a while. But um, in the sense, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more, but budget has been what kills me the most. Now, this right here is the reason why. If you ever get down to $2,000 at any point during a year, then you get what's called crisis of the elites. And a crisis of the elites means you literally wipe every investment you've ever made. And because of the fact that you only get three investments per year, I could be, you know, 10 years into this where I've gotten 30 investments, I get all those wipe, I'm back down to zero. It's going to take me another 10 years to get that much investment back into my stuff. So, you can see how getting crisis of the elites can be such a terrible pain. So that's a lot of the game. I'm about you know, almost half an hour into this and I haven't even unpaused the game. I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here. Um, we'll come back next time and I'm going to actually unpause the game and we're going to see this game in action. Like I said, I've had a lot of fun with this game. I haven't beat it yet. There's a lot of challenges. There are some things that I dislike about this game and I do maybe hope that maybe the developers will hear and maybe maybe they'll tweak a few things and change some things maybe not it's it's okay it's their game uh, i do think it is a it's a pretty solid game um and we'll play we'll, we'll get into a little bit more about some of the positives and negatives uh next time as i actually unpause the game we can get into it i do appreciate you watching and i hope you join me again next time thank you and goodbye